All right, so now we're going to go ahead and talk about solving equations. So first, let's talk about expressions. Now, expressions, we tend to simplify through addition, subtraction, multiplication, exponents, all those good things. Now, when it comes to equations, we're talking about two equivalent expressions. Okay, 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. That's what equation means, is equals. Now, let's get some boring things out of the way. A few quick tips when we're talking about equations is we're going to keep one line for one letter. So, you know, again, just don't try to squeeze too much in there. As you go through and solve an equation, line up your equal signs, help keep you organized, and then show every single step. In the end, what we're going to see is our solution is our answer, not just that numerical answer at the end, x equals something um, or other. We really want to make sure that someone can understand what's going on when they look at our solution. Now, let's go ahead and look again at 2 plus 3 equals 5, that equation we were working with earlier. Now, let's say I wanted to eliminate that 3. I'm going to use its opposite, um, a negative 3. And I know that 3 plus negative 3 gives me 0 which just leaves me with that 2 on the left side. 2 plus 0, the identity tells me that's 2. But now, this is no longer an equation. However, if I decrease the right side by 3, the same amount, I wind up with 2 on the right side as well. 2 equals 2. That is an equation. Those are the same. Way I have the same value on the left side and the right side. And I can do this with lots of operations. You see me here doing it with 3. 3 times 2 equals 6. And if I multiply the other side by 3 as well, 6 equals 6. Obviously, this isn't necessarily that interesting, but the principle is easy to see when we work with numbers here. So if we change the value of both sides in the same way, we retain our equation. So that allows us to then do what, almost whatever we want to either side of the equation as long as we do it to both sides of the equation. Go ahead and read this to yourself. And this is kind of an exercise. So if you want to pause it for a sec, that's great. And you probably would think x plus 5 is um, or equals 7. And that's great. That's one way we could describe it. However, we could also say a number, a variable is representing a number, plus 5 is equal to 7. And then we can look at a few other examples. Um, a number increased by 5 is equal to 7. Um, you know, five more than a number is equal to seven. Okay. And in fact, if we just get rid of the equal to part, if you reread these with just is, you would see that it ends up being pretty much the same, works out um, just the same. So is is the same as equals. Remember, a variable is just any number whose value is unknown or can change. And we'll use something like x or a or b or some other symbol to represent or hold the place of that number. So 7 equals x plus 5. We don't know what x is in this case. Um, so we want to know the value of it. Well, if you kind of say that aloud, what we end up wanting is x equals something. So x would be by itself. We can put x on the correct side in this case, so at least when we say it, it works. And now let's go ahead and look at how we could go a little further and actually figure out the value of x. And we'll look at a slightly different equation here, x minus 3 equals 7. So again, I'm trying to get that statement, x equals something. So x would be alone. So I'm kind of rewriting things here in terms of a coefficient um, and a base. And I have one of these x's, however big those happen to be. And then I have three negative ones. Um, and then on the right side, I just have seven positive ones. So if I want that statement x equals something, I'm kind of already there, except right now I have x minus 3 equals something. So I need to get rid of those three negative ones. 
Well, I can use opposites to do that. I know that each one of those negatives will cancel with one positive. But if I add three positives to one side, I have to do it to the other. And then I can go ahead and cancel out each of the opposites, leaving me with no more of those negative ones on the left side, just one X of X. And then on the right side, I'm going to combine together all those positive tiles and I get 10. Then I would want to go through and actually check my work. To check the work, I'm claiming that X has a value of 10. So I'm going to plug in X in place of 10. They're, they're equal to each other. And then I verify that it works. And you can always know that you have the right answer by substituting in, or we can learn some new methods for that as well later.